Good morning. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, live from Las Vegas. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. We are at Caesars Forum, having lots of great conversations, as I mentioned. This is just the start of day two, a tremendous amount of content yesterday and coming at you today. Two guests join us from Slalom now. We've got Chris Samuels, Principal Machine Learning, and Bethany Mudd, Senior Director, Experience Design. Welcome to theCUBE, guys. guys. Hi, Thank thanks for you. having us. So Slalom and Snowflake, over 200 joint customers, over 1,800 plus engagements, lots of synergies there, partnership. We're here today to talk about intelligent products. Talk to us about what, how do you define intelligent products and then kind of break that down. Yeah, I can I can start with the simple version, right? So when we think about intelligent products, what they're doing is they're doing more than they were explicitly programmed to do. So instead of having a developer write all of these rules and have if this, then that, right? We're using data and real-time insights to make products that are more performant and improving over time. Yeah, it's really bringing together an ecosystem of, of a series of things uh, to have integrated capabilities working together that, that themselves offer constant improvement, better uh, better understanding, better flexibility, and better usability um, for, for everyone involved. And there are four pillars of intelligent products. Let's walk through those technology, intelligence, experiences, and operations. Sure, uh, so for technology, uh, like most modern uh, data architectures, it, it has sort of a data component and it has a modern cloud platform. But here, here the key is, is sort of things being disconnected, uh, things being uh, self-contained and, 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 and de decoupled such that there's better um, integration time, better iteration time, more uh, cross-use and more extensibility and scalability with the cloud native portion of that. And the intelligence piece? And the intelligence piece is, is the data that's been processed by machine learning, uh, algorithms or by predictive analytics that provide sort of the most valuable or more in, most insightful inferences or conclusions. So, so by bringing together again the tech and the intelligence, uh, that's you know, sort of the two of the pillars that, that begin to move forward that, that enable sort of the other two pillars, which are? Experiences uh, and operations. Yeah. Perfect. And if we think about those, all of the technology, all of the intelligence in the world doesn't mean anything if it doesn't actually work for people. Without use, there is no value. So as we're designing these products, we want to make sure that they're supporting people. As we're automating, there are still people accountable for those tasks. There are still impacts to people in the real world. So we want to make sure that we're doing that intentionally uh, so we're building the greater good. Yeah, and from the operations perspective, it, it's it's you can think of traditional DevOps becoming MLOps, where uh, th there's an overall platform and a f uh, framework in place to manage not only the software components of it, but but the overall workflow and the data flow and the model lifecycle, uh, such that we have tools uh, and, and people from different backgrounds uh, and different teams developing and maintaining this than you would uh, previously see with, with something like pro uh, product engineering. Can you guys walk us through an example of how you work with a customer? I'm envisioning you know, meeting with a lot of yellow stickies and prioritization. And I, I don't know if that's how it works, but let, take us through like the, the, the start and the sequence. You have my heart. I am a workshop <laughs> lover. Anytime you have the scratch <laughs> off like lottery stickers on something, you know it's a good one. Um, but as we think about our approach, we typically start with either a discovery or mobilize phase. We're really, we're, we're starting by gathering context and really understanding the business, the client, the users, and that full path to value? Who are all the teams that are going to have to come together and start working together to deliver this intelligent product? And once we've got that context, we can start solutioning and ideating on that. Um, but really, it comes down to making sure that we've earned the right and we've got the smarts to, to move into this space intelligently. Yeah, and truly, it's it's the intelligent product is, itself is sort of tied to the use case. The business knows what the most, what is what is potentially the most valuable here. And so, so by communicating and working and co-creating with the business, we can define then, okay, here are the use cases and here are where machine learning and, and the overall intelligent product can maybe add more disruptive value uh, than others by saying, let's, let's pretend that, you know, Maybe the, uh, your ML model or your predictive analytics is, is like a dial that we could turn up to 11. Which one of those dials turning, turned up to 11 could add the most value or disruption to your business? Uh, and therefore, you know, how can we prioritize and then work toward that, that, that pie in the sky goal? Okay, so the, the, the client comes and says, this is the outcome we want. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then you help them, you gather the right people, sort of extract all the little you know, pieces of knowledge, and then help them prioritize so they can focus, and then what? Yeah, so from there, um, we're gonna take the approach that seeing is solving. We wanna make sure that we get the right voices in the room and we've got the right alignment. So we're going to map out everything. We're going to diagram what that experience is going to look like, how technology is going to play into it, all of the roles and actors involved. We're gonna draw a map of the ecosystem that everyone can understand, whether you're in marketing or the IT sort of area once again so we can get crisp on that outcome and how we're going to deliver it. And from there we start building out that roadmap and backlog and we deliver iteratively. So by not thinking of things as getting to the final product after a three year push, we really want to shrink those build, measure, learn loops. So we're getting all of that feedback and we're listening and evolving and growing the same way that our products are. Yeah, something like an intelligent product Product is, is pretty heady, uh, so it's pretty it's a pretty heavy concept to talk about. And so the question becomes, what what is the outcome that ultimately needs to be achieved? Uh, and then who from where in the business uh, across the different potentially diff business product lines or business uh, business departments needs to be brought together? What data needs to be brought together uh, such that the people can understand how they themselves can shape this, the stakeholders can, uh, can can how the product itself can be shaped? And therefore, uh, what is the ultimate outcome collectively for everybody involved? Because because while 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 your data might be fueling, you know, finances or someone else's uh, intelligence and that kind of thing, bringing it all together allows for for a more seamless product that might benefit more uh, more of the overall structure yeah. um, of can the organization. We, can you talk a little bit about how Slalom and Snowflake are enabling, like a customer example, a customer to take that data, flex that muscle, and create intelligent products that delight and surprise their customers? Yeah, so 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 here's a, a great story. Um, we uh, we worked to co-create with uh, Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Uh, so we created an intelligent product with them uh, to to enable safer rail travel, uh, more pre uh, preventative, more efficient preventative maintenance, uh, and a more efficient and real-time track status feedback uh, to the rail operators. Um, so so in this case, we brought yeah the, the the intelligent product itself was okay. How do you create a, a better rail monitoring service? Um, um, and while that itself uh, was the primary driver of the data, multiple other parts of the organization uh, are using sort of the intelligent product as, as, as part of their now daily, daily routine, whether it's from the preventative maintenance perspective or it's from route usage, route prediction, um, or indeed helping uh, KHI move forward into making trains a more software-centered set of products in the future. So taking that example, um, I would imagine when you running, a, like I'm going to call that a project. I hope mm -hmm. that's you know, okay. So when I'm running a project like that, I would imagine that sometimes you run into, oh wow, okay, to really be successful at this, the company, the project versus whole house. Yeah. The, the company doesn't have the right data architecture, the right skills, or the right you know data team. Oh. Um, now, is it as simple as oh yeah, just put it all into Snowflake? I doubt it. So how do you do you encounter that often? How do you deal with that? it? <laughs> It's a journey. So I think it's really about making sure we're meeting clients where they are. And I, I think that's something that we actually do pretty well. Um, so as we think about delivery, co-creation and co-delivering is a huge part of our model. So we want to make sure that we have the client teams with us. So as we start thinking about intelligent products, it can be incorporating a small feature um, with subscription-based services. It doesn't have to be creating your own model and, and sort of going deep. It really does come down to like, what value do you want to get out of this, right? Yeah, it is important that it is a journey, right? So it doesn't have to be okay. There's there's a big bang applied to you and your company's uh, tech industry te or tech tech. Um Ecosystem. You can just start by saying, okay, how will I bring my data together in a data lake? How do I see across my different pillars of excellence in my own business? Um, and then how do I manage potentially this in an overall MLOps platform such that it can be sustainable and gather more insights and improve itself with time and therefore be more impactful to, to the ultimate users of the tool? Because uh, again, as Bethany said, that without use, these, these things are just, just tools on the shelf somewhere that have little value. So it's a journey, as you both said, completely mm -hmm. agree with that. It's a journey that's getting faster and faster <laughs> because, I mean, we've seen so much acceleration in the last couple of years. The consumer demands have massively changed. Absolutely. In every industry. How do Slalom and Snowflake come together to help uh, businesses define the journey, but also accelerate it so that they um, can stay ahead or get ahead of the competition? Yeah. So... <sighs> One thing I think is interesting about the technology field right now is I feel like we're at the point where it's not 
the technology or the tools that's limiting us or you know constraining what we can build it's our imaginations right and when i think about intelligent products and all of the things that are capable um, that you can achieve with ai and ml that's not widely known. There's so much tech jargon, and we put all of those statistical words on it, and you know the things you don't know. And instead, really, what we're doing is we're, we're providing different ways to learn and grow. So I think if we can demystify and humanize some of that language, I really would love to see all of these companies better understand the crayons and, and the tools in their toolbox. Speaking from a creative perspective, I love it. <laughs> no, it, it, and, and I'll, I'll do the tech nerd bit. Uh, so, so there is, you're, you're right, there is, there is a, comp- a portion where you need to bring data together and, and tech together and that kind of thing. So, so something like Snowflake is a great enabler for how to actually bring the data of multiple parts of an organization together into you know, a data warehouse or a data lake uh, and then be able to manage that sort of in, in an MLOps platform. Um, particularly with some of the press that uh, uh, um, Snowflake has put out this week, things becoming more Python native, uh, allowing for more uh, ML experimentation and some more native insights in the platform rather than going off Sno- uh, Snowflake platform to do some of that kind of thing, makes Snowflake uh, an incredibly valuable portion of the, uh, of the data management and of the tech uh, and of the engineering of the overall product. So. I agree, Bethany, lack of imagination sometimes is the barrier, we get so down into yeah. the weeds, but there's also lack of skills, I mentioned the organizational, you know, st- structural issues, politics, you know, whatever it is, you know, specific agendas. How do you guys help? with that? Can, will you bring in you know, resources to help and yeah. fill gaps? And- so we will bring in a cross-disciplinary um, team of experts. So you will see an experienced designer as well as your ML architects, as well as other technical architects and what we call solution owners, because we want to make sure that we've got a lot of perspectives so we can see that problem from a lot of different angles. Um, the other thing that we're bringing in is a repeatable process, um, a repeatable engineering methodology, which when you zoom out and you look at it, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But what we're doing is we're training against it. We're building tools. We're building templates. We're reimagining what our deliverables look like for intelligent products, just so we're not only speeding up the development and and getting to those outcomes faster, but we're also continuing to grow and we can gift those things to our clients and, and help support them as well. well. And not only that, uh, what what we do uh, at Slalom is, to, is we want to think about transition from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and so by having all the stakeholders in the room from the earliest point, both the business stakeholders, the technical stakeholders, if they have data scientists, if they have engineers, who, who's going to be taking this and maintaining this intelligent product long after we're gone? Because again, we will transition uh, and, and someone else will be taking over the maintenance of this team. Yeah. One, they will understand you know, early, early from the beginning the, the path that it is on and be more capable of, of maintaining this and to understand sort of the ethical concerns behind okay here's how parts of your system affect this other parts of the system and you know some sometimes ML gets some bad press because it's it's misapplied or there are concerns or or, or models or data are used outside of context and there's there's some you know there, there, there are potentially uh, some ill effects to be had by bringing those people together much earlier uh, it, it allows for the business to truly understand and the, the stakeholders to ask the questions uh, that they that need to be continually asked to evaluate is this the right thing to do how do I how does my part affect the whole uh, and and how do I have an overall impact that is in a positive way and is something you know truly be, being done most effectively so that's that knowledge transfer I, I, I mean I hesitate to even say that it makes it sound so black and white because you're co-creating here yeah. but essentially you're you know to use the the cliche you're teaching them how to fish yeah. not you know going to ongoing you know do the fishing for them so yeah. that thought diversity is so critical, as is the internal alignment. Last question for you guys before we wrap here. Where can customers go to get started? Do they engage Solemn, Snowflake? Can they do both? You definitely can. Um, it's, you, we can come through. I mean, we're uh, we're, we're fortunate that Snowflake uh, has 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 uh, blessed us with the title of, of Partner of the Year again for the fifth time. Congratulations! Um, thank you, thank you. Um, we are we are incredibly humbled in that. So so we do a lot of work with Snowflake. Uh, you could certainly come to Slalom, uh, any one of our local markets, or or, or, or build or emerge. Um, and we'll definitely work together. We'll figure out what the right team is. We'll, we'll have lots and lots of conversations because uh, it is most important for you as a set of st- business stakeholders to define what is right for you and what you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Good stuff, you guys. Thank you so much for joining Dave and me talking about intelligent products, what they are, how you co-design them, and the impact that data can make with customers if they really bring the right minds together and get creative. We appreciate your insights and your thoughts. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us, guys. Yeah. All right. 
For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage day two, Snowflake Summit 22 from Las Vegas. We'll be right back with our next guest.